Hello, before we get started, we need a little testing world to mess around with some boxes and a floor and a player. So I'm not going to show it in detail, I'm just going to set it up real quick and then explain the player and then get to the grenade launcher. Okay, right here with the box that was just made, it's nice sometimes to select um, not select the children. So when you go move around, you're not moving the collision or the mesh, just the root of the rigid. So there it is. And we need to add a group, some specific detail for later on, just to manage how the grenade interacts with things. So I'm just going to call this a wall or whatever you want to call it and add. Okay, now that we have a basic test world, we need to make a uh, player. Now the player could be different on your scene. Really just want to show you how to make a grenade launcher, but just to get something working here, I will uh, show you the basic code to make a player. So, new scene. Typically it's a kinematic body for your player controlling, so make it their root uh, kinematic player. Add a collision. That's really need one for this scenario so I'm just gonna make it whatever oh a box if I've never seen a box before usually it's a pillow shape all right uh, I need a head too usually a player has a pivot point so just a spatial node would do that trick rename it head and this is where we want the camera to be so when we look around the camera follows the head and this is also where we're gonna be attaching the grenade launcher so let's save this in a folder called player the scene and okay now that we added a head camera and player let's make a script call it player controller save this in the same folder there's a few important things we need to add a signal called fire So this is how we're going to tell the grenade launcher that's attached to us later on to fire. And we need to use a... We're going to check if the left mouse button is pressed. So every frame in the process loop here. If input dot is action just pressed fire, then let's emit our signal fire. And that should about do it for that part of controlling the grenade launcher. This other part isn't so particularly important, so I'm just going to copy and paste it over. Generic movement code. Um, just need to tell it where the pivot point is, which is our head. So on ready var, we'll get a reference to pivot. Oh, var pivot equals the head. And that should about do it for our basic player setup. Oh, and one last thing. We need to add um, capture the mouse when we start up so we can actually look around freely. So on ready method here. Input dot get mouse or set mouse mode captured. So all you're going to be able to do is look around and click to fire. So I'll save that. Now let's get started with the fun part, making the grenade launcher. So new scene, click on 3D space, and it's going to rename it to grenade launcher. And under that we're going to have a few more nodes. Inner spatial just to hold all the graphics or meshes. And then we need a fire point. So under, I'll just use a position 3D node. It works good for that. And underneath the graphics, let's add a few graphics. Just do a few boxes. So a mesh instance. Right, let's add another one. One for the site and one for the body. So let's get the body here. Now what's important is the negative Z direction is usually forward. So here's positive. Over here it's going to be the negative Z, so let's make a little site. 
for this that will indicate the uh, muzzle or the forward facing direction on the launcher. So let's get in our cube in here. Let's save this as the grenade launcher in its own folder. Go up, create a folder, grenade. And now we need to make the actual grenade, which might be the more tricky part. So add a new scene. And this time we want the uh, root to be a rigid body. So we want to use the Godot's physics engine here. So let's add that. Call it grenade. And we need to add a collision shape and a visual instance here, or a mesh instance, I mean. So there's the mesh. Now let's add the collision. And a nice circle would do. Um, a radius of 0 0.02. Something small. Smaller than what it was. <laughs> and let's change that to 0 0.2. Height 0 0.4. And there, we got ourselves our grenade. It doesn't do anything, but we do want to change some of the properties in the rigid body. It's a little bit heavy, so we get a 1. And this part here is pretty important, so if you wanted the collisions to detect like they hit a wall and explode immediately, which I'll show you later, you want to turn on contact monitoring and move up how many things it reports to one, at least one. I'll save this in the same folder called Grenade. We need a few more nodes to finish this off. Two more timers and the blast radius. So let's add some timers. Okay, let's give this blast radius a nice big old circle. Bump that up a bit more. There, big. Well, you can always play around and make it whatever you like. And let's rename these timers to something more uh, helpful. So we need a timer to queue free or remove the grenade so we don't have a crazy amount. And then we need a lifetime spanner, so it'll blow up if it never hits anything. A life span timer. In the life span timer, we want that to start automatically. And make it a one shot, and let's do, do three seconds. Now that we have the grenade, let's go script the launcher. It's going to be real easy, only a handful of lines of code. So click on the grenade launcher's root, add a script. That name is perfectly fine. And in here, Let's get a reference to the grenade we just made. So on ready var grenade equals preload the grenade scene we made. So there it is, the first thing. Now, other important part is connect the fire from our player to our launcher. So on ready, or sorry, in the ready method here. Once the grenade launcher gets in the scene, we need to connect. Now let me show you what we need to connect to so it makes more sense. So in the player, we're going to be attaching the uh, launcher to the head. So we get the parent, it's going to be the head. And get the parent one more time, it's going to be the player. And the player has the script right here that has a signal fire. So connect to that fire signal by doing get parent dot get parent dot connect the fire signal to ourself and we want to call the method add grenade it does not exist yet but we're gonna make it real soon here and by soon I mean right now add grenade all right so now we want to basically get that grenade into the world or instance it so first thing is var grenade instance equals grenade dot instance now that we have that instance we can add it to our world or our test world I like to add bullets and these kind of things to the root node which will be the spatial node called world to get to that root node we need to say git tree dot git root 
of our current tree and then get child zero because the world node is always the first child of the root I'll show you that right now what I mean so if you had a project running and you go to the remote tab you'll see you'll see the root is a viewport and below the first child is world so that is what we're gonna add our grenade to dot add child grenade instance okay the next line of code is pretty important we need to move that grenade to where our fire point is and to do that we just need to do grenade instance dot global transform which contains rotation and location and um, position equals our 3d point position uh, global transform so now that we have the orientation and location of our grenade in the fire point now we just need to add a force to the negative z direction now using godot's built-in physics engine there's a method called add central force so let's add that to our grenade grenade instance dot add central force in the direction is in the negative z direction so self our grenades new our new global position that we uh, copied over from a 3d dot basis in the negative z so there we go and then we want to multiply this by some forceful number so 200 should be a nice forceful number and that is it for the grenade launcher scene all it really does is add the grenade and then applies a force and it connects itself to our player's fire signal really basic try to keep it simple there will be a link to a more polished and finished version in the description if you want to add more fun stuff now back over on the grenade we need to add a script to that for exploding so here's our f method to explode let's type it in now before I get too far I don't want to forget to actually attach the signal on the lifespan timer timeout to our explode that we just made so if you did it right you should get a little icon here indicating that you connect a lifespan timers timeout to our explode now the first thing we want to do when we explode is start the queue free method queue free timer dot start now typically you don't want to see the visuals after we explode so whatever you have that's visual mesh instance dot hide and now you would normally start a particle effect or something but just keeping this real basic next would be we're just gonna get everything that's in the blast radius and do something to them so for bodies or a body in our blast radius so area dot get over lapping bodies and we need to check if the body is even anything we want to do anything with so if it's a rigid if body is rigid then let's add a force to it so same way we're launching the grenade let's force the boxes around but we need to get a direction so this box or body dot add central force and to get that direction we just need to take the spot and space of the grenade and the spot and space for the box minus to get the direction so let's do that body dot global transform dot origin minus the grenade self that's what we're working on global transform dot origin now I want to normalize this so it's always giving a vector one or less so we can have a predictable result uh, it's getting hard to see the long line of code my my bad so let's break it out here parentheses this dot normalized multiplied by something nice and forceful uh, let's try 500 close that off now for example the few other things you might want to add I'm just going to quickly show them here say if it was a player if body is kinematic 
let's do something like here's an example body dot velocity usually a kinematic body has a velocity or a linear velocity variable and you could just add on um, a vector with a magnitude in that direction it'll push one last nice example if body dot has method say hurt you could do something like take health away or whatever it is that you want to do to a uh, body getting uh, blasted and I want to comment this out because our kinematic body does not have a velocity property and before we close this off say you want to hit a wall and you want the grenade to explode immediately that is why we added the group to uh, added the wall group to the boxes so let's do that right now so let's go back to our rigid body and let's connect a signal that says body entered so if it hits one of our boxes basically if body dot is in group wall then we want to just explode immediately we don't want to wait for the timer to go out now that we have the script finished for the grenade go ahead and save and one last thing we need to do is actually add the grenade launcher to our player so go back to your player scene 3d here and instance in our grenade launcher that we finished up now just position it to a spot that makes sense so to the right down move it forward and click on camera for preview that about does it okay and before I let you go we need to actually add the player to the world as easy as instancing player drag up the player out of the floor there and there he is let's go go ahead and test that out and blast those boxes away Hopefully this video was helpful in getting a start on making a grenade launcher and like I said a more detailed or finished look will be in uh, the description for you to download if you want all of that.